Montreal's watching CTV News weekends at 6. Tonight, no ticket to ride. I am trying to uh, defend my owner. I'm not a liar. Why is this 87-year-old man being ordered to appear in court? Plus, unease in Bader Fay. Staff in the whole town, if you ask me. It's like something like that, that we keep uh, talking about every day. Police continue to hunt for the man who shot a West Island SAQ clerk. And courting Montreal fans. The NBA is like the most like, best thing in the world. The band in the NHL, band and everything. The NBA comes to town at a sold out Bell Center. CTV News with Mitsumi Takahashi and Todd Bender Hayden. Good evening. An 87 year old Montreal man is headed to court next month over 50 cents. That's how much he was supposed to pay two years ago to take the train back home. But he says the ticket machine was out of order at the time. Now he faces a fine of $110 after he was stopped by train inspectors. Derek Conlon explains. The warning signs at the TMR train station are clear. In order to ride the train, you have to have a valid ticket. But two years ago, when Ladislav Husarek tried to get a valid ticket, he was stymied. The machine uh, didn't want to accept it, just did, it didn't work. Try as he might, Husarek had no luck finding a one-way reduced fare ticket, not at the nearby stores and not at the station. And so I tried to uh, find somebody and there was nobody, no officer of, of the company at the station. Husarek had a valid pass for the bus and metro and needed to pay just an extra 50 cents to ride the train home to Pierrefonds. When he got off the train near his home, he was approached by an AMT inspector. He explained his side of the story and thought that was that. I was confident I didn't feel guilty because I was, there was no possibility to get a ticket because the machine didn't work. But four months later, he got a letter telling him to either plead guilty and pay a $110 fine or plead not guilty. He says he never heard from the AMT again so he could explain himself. Nothing came in the mail. So I thought it was just forgotten. Husarek's not the only person who's had a problem with the ticket machines at the train stations. Other people have had difficulties buying tickets too. And everyone's come up with the same solution. They just get on the train. You have to get on the train. I had to go to work. Uh, that's, that's what it takes. That's what it takes, you know. This man took the train to work this morning without a ticket because the machine was out of order. The AMT says if people are stopped, they just have to call the AMT to explain themselves the AMT will verify whether the machine was defective, and if it was, no fine will be issued. Husarek didn't do that because he thought the matter was settled. Now he's off to court. To think that uh, such a man would just uh, try to cheat for a sum of 50 cents, it's ridiculous. Derek Conlon, CTV News. It's a controversial deal that could land the province of Quebec in court. Montreal's Transit Corporation has finally signed a deal to buy hundreds of new metro cars from Bombardier. But in order to seal the deal, the Quebec government had to pass a special law to hand the contract to Bombardier without an open bid. Chinese and Spanish competitors are crying foul, and as Rob Lurie reports, many are worried the deal will reflect badly on the province. At long last, a glimpse at the metro car spacious. of the future. More spacious, better ventilation, and a smoother ride. In addition, high-definition screens provide you with continuous news feeds. It's initially a $1.2 billion contract to buy 468 cars. And clearly, the new trains are a step up from these 45-year-olds. But it's a controversial purchase. Originally, the STM put out an international call for tenders, but finally, the government passed a special law to ensure a consortium of Bombardier and Alstom gets it, even though a Spanish company promised it could deliver the cars cheaper. I think it sends the wrong message at the wrong time. This trade lawyer worries that protectionist attitude could hurt Quebec at a time Canada is negotiating a free trade pact with the EU. In the context when we're, we've lived through this uh, financial difficulty the past three years and we were very worried that protectionist barriers would go up, it is a big deal. But former Premier Lucien Bouchard, who helped negotiate the purchase, says it was the right thing to do. 
we've done all over the world, and we had to do it in Quebec after having tried very hard and for a very long time to proceed otherwise. And he adds the legal costs alone were getting high. At the end, it was a little bit embarrassing, you know, to, to spend uh, so much money on, on legal fees. Bombardier believes it won't hurt them in the future. They point to a contract signed weeks ago for high-speed trains for Italy. They'll be built in Spain. That although we're based in Canada, Bombardier is a huge uh, EU player, a European player, uh, and we're all over the place. The transport minister says at the end of the day, they'll be creating more than 900 jobs and improving public transit. We take a decision like by American, like other uh, government in the world, that we find that the best price, the best important economic impact in all region in Quebec. It's been a four-year saga, but the controversial deal is finally done. The new cars will be delivered in early 2014. Rob Lurie, CTV News. Montreal police are still looking for two men in connection with a shooting and robbery at a liquor outlet on Monday. A female employee in her 50s was shot and paralyzed. It happened at the SAQ in Bay Durfe on the West Island. Well, now other people who work in the area say they're worried about being targeted. Stéphane Giroux has a story. The shooting took place at noon in the strip mall next to the Provigo along Highway 20 at the corner of Morgan. Two men are seen here entering the SAQ. Inside the store, a 58-year-old employee was shot in the back of the head. Seconds later, the same two men are seen fleeing the scene. It went directly to the back stores, and for some reason, they attacked the, uh, the victim that was on scene, a 50, 58 years old female. The woman is alive, but suffered a major neck injury and might never walk again. The suspects are described as English speaking in their mid 20s. Something else is bothering police. Nothing was stolen. At this point, we have to figure out the motive since we know that nothing was stolen from the business. In the small strip mall, people are still reeling as to why anyone would have targeted the employee. Staff in the whole town, if you ask me. It's like something like that we keep uh, talking about every day. She came to get her medication here. We saw her about once a month. Really nice lady, though. So I have uh, no explanation whatsoever. During quiet weekdays, the store is usually staffed with a manager and an employee. No one at the SAQ's head office could explain why the woman was alone when the shooting took place. The union says management has agreed to post additional security guards for now. Police have asked to meet everyone who runs a business here. I'm guessing that this is probably because what happened now and also what may have happened in the past. The stores are regularly targeted by thieves who use the proximity of Highway 20 to make their getaway. But for now, police are focused on one thing, finding these two men responsible for the shooting. Stéphane Giroux, CTV News. The body of a man was found today in Verdun. For the time being, police are treating it as a suspicious death, but they have made an arrest in connection with the case. It happened on Bannantyne at Hickson. Derek Conlon is on the scene at this hour. And Derek, what are you hearing where you are? Well, Todd, unfortunately, very little, and that's due mainly to the fact that police really haven't begun their investigation just yet. Homicide detectives aren't expected at this location for at least another hour. What I can tell you, however, is that 911 got a call just before 3 o'clock this afternoon about a death here at 3902 Bannantyne at the corner of Hickson. When police arrived, they did find a man dead inside the home. Now, within a relatively short amount of time, in another part of Verdun, another man was arrested. For the time being, police are saying that there is a link between that arrest and the death, but exactly what that link is, they're keeping to themselves for now. Police did go door to door in this area in the immediate vicinity of where the, uh, the body was discovered. They questioned the people who live in this area looking for any clues uh, to what may have happened, looking for witnesses who may have seen or heard anything, but they only met with a few people for a short amount of time, and then those people were allowed to go back home. Now, I spoke with uh, Yannick Paradis of the Montreal Police Department, and he says there's still a lot of work to do uh, before police determine exactly what happened here. The scene is secure. The investig investigators will be uh, coming on scene and uh, try to establish uh, which few elements what took place. So uh, for sure we're going to see a CSI officer as well to come and uh, pick up elements that will help through the investigations. So it's a long proceed uh, before we go on with conclusions. 
Now, Todd, if it is determined that this was a homicide, it will have been the 33rd homicide committed on the island of Montreal so far this year. And compared to last year, there were only 29 homicides, so a little worse this year for homicide detectives. Thanks, Derek. Derek Conlon live in Verdun tonight. A man from Saint Michel who killed his wife in front of their two daughters over a year ago was sentenced today to life in prison with no possibility of parole for 15 years. The girls were 11 and 15 years old at the time when they saw their father stab their mother dozens of times. The judge says the murders had a devastating impact on the girls that they live in constant fear that their father will come back to harm them. Flames swept through an empty building on René Lévesque East near De Lorigné this, this afternoon. The two-story building had been boarded up since another fire at the same location two years ago. The owner already had a permit to demolish the building and turn it into condos. It's not clear what started today's fire. And there will be more traffic problems for drivers as work continues on the Mercier Bridge this weekend. From 11 o'clock tonight until 5 a.m. Monday, only one lane will be open in each direction. The same applies next weekend as well. Also, access to the Mercier Bridge by Early Street towards the South Shore will be closed during the construction work. Sort of a cold day, but the weekend's going to be a little warmer. <laughs> Uh, temperatures will climb a couple of degrees heading into the weekend, but yes, it certainly was cold and the winds didn't help. Here's a look at what's happening right now on our latest satellite picture. We've got an upper level low spinning over northeastern Quebec, bringing cloud here into the south. Today we saw winds out of the west at about 30 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 50 kilometers per hour, and we hit a high of only six in Montreal. The norm for this time in October is 11, so we're five degrees below normal. Temperatures overnight dipping very close to the freezing mark once again and below freezing outside of Montreal. We will gain a few degrees heading into the weekend. Some wet weather for the second half of the weekend. We'll have all the details coming up. Thanks, Lori. Well, there's a different kind of game being played at the Bell Centre tonight. The NBA is in town with a game between the Toronto Raptors and the New York Knicks. Now, this is the first time the league has come to Montreal in 20 years. They're playing in front of a sellout crowd. Catherine, could this be something that we're going to start seeing more of in the future in Montreal? Well, basketball fans are certainly hoping it's a sign of things to come. Canada may not be ready yet for another NBA team, but the coaches and players I spoke with today say that they've noticed a really strong interest here in Montreal. 22,000 fans attending tonight's game. With numbers like that, the NBA says they would like to see more preseason games played here at the Bell Centre in the years to come. Lacing up high tops instead of skates. That's not something you see in the Canadians' dressing room every day. It's the Toronto Raptors versus the New York Knicks, right here in Montreal. This is not a, how to say, a basketball town that has a professional team in it, so I think people want to see, see, see a pro basketball game. It's been 20 years since the NBA has come to the city, so it's no wonder this game has attracted a sellout crowd. Oh, really? Mm, I like that. I, lo I love the, you know, see the house close, you know, and uh, a lot of people watching us, you know, and uh, hopefully we do a great job and we win the game. So what happens when basketball comes to a hockey town? For some, it makes dreams come true. The NBA is like the most like best thing in the world, but better than the NHL, better than everything. 22,000 seats have sold out for tonight's event, which is more than a Habs game, but only because they've added these courtside seats. Seats that have sold for up to $500 a piece. Proof that Montreal might be a vibrant market for just about any sport. But is it strong enough to support a permanent NBA team? I wouldn't say that this game would bring or make something like that happen. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when you, have a, when you have a quality building like this, it's nice for us to be able to bring an exhibition game here for sure. Still, it's a start and basketball lovers have high hopes. It's been a long time coming and I hope uh, that David Stern and the NBA continues to bring the game here on a yearly basis. If for no other reason, for the young guns who aspire to be the next big stars. It's not just the hockey country no more, you know what I mean? We're going to have guys drafted within a couple years. You guys look out for me and a couple of my teammates over here, you know? <laughs> and you know they'll jump through hoops to get there. Catherine Sheriffs, CTV News. So the big question, would professional basketball actually work in Montreal? On Talkback Montreal today, could Montreal support an NBA team? 
Let us know by calling 514-790-1212 or go to our website, ctvmontreal.ca. We will have the results later in the newscast. Coming up, the Prime Minister is in Switzerland for the Francophone Summit. The Supreme Court gets involved in Quebec's ethics and religion course and an entertainment on tour at the Imperial, some blues, some abstract art on Bijou. Wednesday. Male teachers are a rare breed, but false accusations are making them an endangered species. It's the kiss of death. Their career is finished. Teachers on trial. Carolyn Van Vlardigan reports Wednesday at 6 on CTV News. Prime Minister Stephen Harper has signed a new taxation treaty with Switzerland. The deal will help the Canadian government get access to more information about potential tax evaders. Harper is in Switzerland for the Francophone Summit. CTV's Danielle Hamamjan is traveling with the Prime Minister. Stephen Harper is back on the international stage meeting with the President of the Swiss Confederation. Now we will... This is the first overseas trip since what many have called a diplomatic humiliation. Earlier this month, Canada lost its bid for a seat on the UN Security Council. The votes are secret, but it is widely believed that because of unpopular Canadian foreign policies, many Muslim and African countries within the Francophonie voted against Canada. I'm delighted that to be here. And to many back at home, this weekend means damage control. To many, but it seems not to harbor. Switzerland, uh, for instance, strongly supported us, as did the vast majority of countries of the Francophonie. Very strongly supported Canada's bid. A statement the opposition says is absurd. I mean, he was making the claim in the House that uh, it's a secret ballot, and therefore we weren't sure who voted for Canada and who didn't vote for Canada. The Liberals say Harper likely alienated at least 37 of the 56 members of the Francophonie when it dropped some aid to Africa. Stephen Harper is trying to show Canada is still a big player on the international stage, trying to recover from that UN debacle by hitting the road. Tomorrow he hands over the Francophonie presidency to Switzerland, and then in the next few weeks he's off to South Korea, Japan, and then Portugal, the country Canada lost to. Danielle Hamamjin, CTV News. Lausanne, Switzerland. The Supreme Court has made an important ruling on media in Quebec. The court says that journalists in this province can protect confidential sources, provided they can show that it is in the public's interest to do so. Today's judgment was a victory for the Globe and Mail and its journalists, that man, Daniel LeBlanc. The case pitted a Montreal company, Polygon, against LeBlanc over his investigative stories about the federal sponsorship scandal. The court ordered LeBlanc to return to a lower court in Quebec to determine whether he can conceal his sources, but this decision effectively means that sources should only be revealed when their identities are vital to the administration of justice and they must be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. The Supreme Court has agreed to hear arguments for and against Quebec's mandatory course on ethics and religion. The course began two years ago and teachers the cultural aspects of the variety of religions. But a Catholic couple from Drummondville has been fighting to have their children opt out of the course. They see it as a violation of their rights. Earlier this year, Loyola High School was granted an exemption from teaching the course. The private Catholic high school offers a similar course but with a more Catholic outlook. Convicted killer Russell Williams has been stripped of his rank as colonel and has now been kicked out of the military. Governor General David Johnston approved the move after being approached by Canadian Forces officials. The disgraced former commander has also had all of his medals revoked. Yesterday, Williams was given two life sentences for the murders of Jessica Lloyd and Marie-France Como. He is also serving time for two sexual assaults and more than 80 break and enters. A young Quebecer has received the Medal of Bravery. <laughs> Michael Perrault-Giroux was honored by the Governor General today in Ottawa. In the summer of 2008, Giroux dove into the waters of the Rivière Rouge to save his younger brother. 16-year-old Andrew Selby was caught in quicksand along the river's shore and was pulled under. Giroux himself almost drowned but was rescued by a passerby. Despite his efforts, his brother did not survive. And now Postscript, CTV News executive producer Barry Wilson with his take on some of the news this week.
And the Oscar for Best Overacting, Exaggeration, and Deception in a Supporting Role goes to Pierre Kersey, PQMA, former actor and now language pitbull. Monsieur Kersey this week compared 115, the Sherry government's slippery and mean language bill, to the War Measures Act. Yep, you heard right. Guess the 40th anniversary of the October crisis left him feeling nostalgic. His boss, Madame Marois, says the liberals are abandoning the defense of French. A somber day for Quebec, she piped up. Wrong, Madame. It was a somber day for Quebec's English-speaking community. We went to the Supreme Court of Canada. Brett Tyler won. We all won. But instead of embracing the decision as a fair and reasonable judgment, the Liberals did their best to make access to English schools more complicated, not less. A couple of hundred more kids, if that many, in the English public school system will lead to the disappearance of French in North America? <sighs> what hyperbole, what dishonesty. We need some oxygen for our schools just to survive, but there is no generosity to be found. Because I often wonder if a viable English school system is something that is even wanted by many in this province. I know one thing, Francophone parents want more choice, but their leaders know best. We went to the highest court in the land. We won, but we still lost. Our community has learned French. We are now more bilingual than Francophones. We send our kids to immersion. Heck, we get our hockey from RDS. We are here largely because we want to be, but to show a little generosity in helping our schools, out of the question. Well, maybe one day, maybe one day, the deep thinkers in Quebec City will realize we are not the enemy. I don't know about you, but I found what played out in the Belleville courtroom this week to be absolutely gut-wrenching. What an evil and sick man this colonel turned out to be. One of Canada's top military men carrying out such acts of depravity. Our attention and our horror were focused on this monster, but let's not forget there were heroes here, two young women who fought back with incredible courage. While this beast fades into the darkness of history, Jessica Lloyd and Marie-France Como should always be remembered for the fullness of their lives, the people they were, and how they enriched everyone around them. That is definitely what we need to remember. I'm Barry Wilson, and that is CTV Postscript for this week. And Postscript can also be heard every Saturday morning on CJAD 800, right after the 7.30 news. Actor director Mathieu Almerich is in town to promote his latest movie. Premieres tonight at the Imperial. It's just one of the things going on this weekend. Here's Christine Long with What's On. Directing is his first love, but acting seems to be quite lucrative for Mathieu Amérique. So in between his big gigs, he made time to write, direct, and act in a little movie called On Tour. It's an appropriate subject for a man who, in between the Cannes and Moscow film festivals, made time for Montreal. Mathieu Amérique plays a seedy promoter touring an American burlesque troupe through France. He only started acting at 30. I didn't know I was able to do that. Like his character in this movie, Mathieu is happy to direct the action from behind the scenes. Actors that are only actors are not aware of the solitude of the director. They think he is God and he is the father and that he has all the answers. See On Tour tonight at the Imperial Theatre. You might already know her as a powerful actress. But did you know that Carolyn Fay is also a powerful blues woman? Original blues pumped out by a talented band on real instruments. Mmm, sounds like authenticity. See the Carolyn Fay Blues Band tonight at Complex Fan Club in St. Therese. And don't miss them next weekend at Clyde's in Point Clare. And don't forget, this is your last week to admire the abstract art by François Vidal on display at Gallery MX on Vijay West. Gore Downey of the Tragically Hip fame performs a solo show at the National, so please, no yelling blow at high dough when you get there. Make it a great weekend. I'm Christine Long. It's going to be cool overnight. Laurie joins us right after the break. And later in New York, what happens when YouTube meets the Guggenheim?
Game's on. And the CTV Sports pros are there. He will get another look tonight to see if... Brian Wild has all the highlights and timely analysis on CTV News. If one guy got cold last... Don't forget Sports Extra when the panel weighs in. Or turn to the web at ctvmontreal.ca. Catch Brian's blog, Habs Fever. Or daily habit with Arvin Vasu. The scrum lets you eavesdrop on all the action. At CTV, we've got the Habs covered. Weather is brought to you by Unipenu. So did I hear flurries? <laughs> it's cold <laughs> enough. Flurries? Say that five times fast. Yeah, especially through the eastern townships and up toward Quebec City. We've got an upper level low spinning off to the northeast. And with those cool temperatures, we are seeing a few flakes around. Before we get to the weather forecast, let's take a look at tonight's selection of weather picks. We're still getting some really nice fall foliage pictures. Karen Kaplan sent us this from her friend's cottage in St. Adele. And how impressive is this? Take a look at how vibrant those maple leaves are. Oh, Canada! If you're out and about on the weekend with your camera, you can send your weather photos to weatherpix at ctv.ca. Here's a look at what's happening on the weather front. Cool, windy conditions prevailing today across southern Quebec. We had wind gusts of over 50 kilometers per hour, daytime highs in the single digits. Meantime, temperatures are coming down quite significantly across the west. Yesterday, Calgary hit a high of 21. Today, they were sitting at 8 degrees. So temperatures closer to seasonable. We've got mainly clear skies still across southern Saskatchewan and southern Manitoba. Now we've got a low spinning up across the northeast, which continues to bring cloud back down into southern Quebec. As we take a look at our sky tracker, you'll notice that there is some precipitation. And with cooler temperatures east of the city, we're picking up light flurries through the townships out toward Quebec City. There's even a risk up in the Laurentians for tonight. Here in Montreal, conditions are expected to stay dry. Here's a look at our systems map. Over the next 24 hours, we'll be keeping an eye on this low pressure system here, which will be dropping down from the Great Lakes. We will see some cloud from that system on Saturday, but conditions are expected to stay dry. It looks like the moisture will slide south of our region, so it looks like a sun cloud mix coming up for Saturday. However, we will see some wet weather push in for Sunday. Our forecast for tonight is for partly cloudy skies, a low of zero here in Montreal. It will be chilly, even colder outside the city. Tomorrow, we're looking at a mix of sun and cloud right through the day, not as windy as today with westerly winds at 15 kilometers per hour and a little warmer with a high of nine compared to today's high of six. Overnight lows tonight dipping down to minus four in the townships, minus six tonight in the Laurentians. Highs tomorrow between five and nine degrees. Here's a look at the long range picture for Montreal. Some wet weather will be pushing in for Sunday afternoon and it looks like this system will set up shop and stick with us through a good part of the week. We're looking at cloudy skies, light rain for Monday and Tuesday, but milder temperatures, a strong southerly flow will mean daytime highs into the mid teens. So it will be getting milder, but yes, we do have some wet weather on the way. A few sunny breaks by the middle of the week. Right now we're sitting at 3 Celsius, 37 Fahrenheit. Back to you. Thanks, Lori. And Paul Karwatsky joins us now with a preview of CTV News at 11.30. Paul? Thank you, Mitsumi. We'll, of course, be continuing to track that suspicious death in Verdun, bringing you a full update at 11.30. Also, it will get loud on Mount Royal. A series of cannons will be fired tonight. We'll tell you why that's happening. And a big night in baseball. The Yankees face elimination against Texas. Paul Gray will have your highlights. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Paul. And coming up, another crisis in Haiti. There is a cholera outbreak. Thousands of people are sick. This is Paul Grape. The Montreal Canadiens suffer a couple of power outages, one on the ice, the other at practice. Andre Corbet has a report coming up on CTV Sports.
I don't think so. <laughs> I think we're a hockey nation and uh, that's how it's always going to be. I don't think we can uh, support and do here down here. I mean, what happened to baseball? Look at what happened to baseball. Unfortunately, no. We'd probably have a better chance supporting another hockey team. Montreal. Montreal's problems, like getting enough high school people to play basketball, I somehow doubt they could be able to have an NBA team. Watching CTV News with Mitsumi Takahashi and Todd Vander Hayden. A cholera outbreak has hit Haiti. It is the biggest medical crisis since the January earthquake. More than 140 people have died so far. Hundreds, perhaps even thousands more, are sick. Genevieve Beauchemin reports. The sick crowd hospitals now so full, some are forced to turn patients away. I raced this guy up here and he just died now as I came to the gate and they told him no. An outbreak of cholera hasn't hit Haiti in 50 years. There are many different conditions which have come together to favor the spread of cholera in Haiti. Haiti's poor sanitation infrastructure disintegrated even further after the earthquake, making the spread of the waterborne bacterial infection difficult to control. It's especially tough in the tents and temporary shelters where the more than one million the earthquake left homeless found refuge. I have no other option, says Christella Justin. The father of my children died in the quake. I have nobody to help me. Aid groups are racing to stop the outbreak from reaching camps outside the capital, Port-au-Prince, handing out clean water, giving hospitals supplies to rehydrate sufferers. Cholera causes diarrhea and vomiting and can kill a healthy person within just hours. All this has renewed fears in Montreal's large Haitian community. They're going to count the people that died in the hospital, but in the streets, there's about like 200 and like even more. Since the quake, many here have been shouldering a heavy burden, sending money back home to help survivors. And now they worry even that won't be enough to keep their loved ones safe and away from cholera. And so they say it's time for the international community to make good on its promise and help. Geneviève Beauchemin, CTV News, Montreal. The French Senate has approved contentious pension reforms that would raise the retirement age in the country from 60 to 62. The vote follows weeks of strikes and protests across France. The measure is expected to win final approval in the French Parliament next week. The government says a change is necessary to save the pension system from collapse, but hundreds of thousands of protests against what they see as an attack on their rights. They were not able to outdevil the devils. No, and they weren't able to outdevil the power outage that they had today in Brossard. Montreal Canadians preparing for their next game tomorrow night in Ottawa. We'll have all the details coming up with the report with Andre Corbin next. So the Habs getting ready for Ottawa. They are. They were trying to anyway, but there was a power outage in Brossard at the Habs practice today, so they didn't get to skate. The lineup should essentially stay the same in Ottawa tomorrow night. Other than a few bad breaks, though, there were some positives to draw from last night's loss to New Jersey. Andre Corbet has more. Every coin has a flip side. Sure, it was a loss, but a maturing carry price prevented a 3-0 final from being a whole lot worse. Fans seem to think that he deserves a start tonight. Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm just out there, just you know, trying to help my team win, and you know, it's uh, it's appreciated. Another aspect of the Habs game that deserves a little recognition is the play of Lars Eller, tagged as the guy in the Halak trade. The young Eller is asserting himself more and more on the NHL ice. I'm confident I'm going to be a top two, top two line player. Uh, I know I'm going to be that. It's it's just a question of when I'm going to get there and right now um, all I got to do is have, have patience and, and keep working hard and I know I know it will come. I like what he brings I think he's got good speed he has good skill uh, you know he has the ability to make plays he, he needs just probably more experience. Alexandre Picard is not going to win the Norris Trophy anytime soon but hasn't given coach Martin a reason to replace him quite yet and same goes for Tom Payet who will surely skate alongside of Gomez and Gianta again Saturday. 
I get, can't get you know, too nervous about it and stuff. Just, I got to go out and play my, play my game, play the simple ways, and that's what coach wants from me. He doesn't want me to turn into a, a fancy player just because I'm with those guys. I got to do the same things that got me here, and uh, hopefully we'll get some chances tomorrow night. Uh, for myself, uh, you know, there's things I could have done better, and uh, but uh, you know, I, fa I, I, I thought I played, uh, you know, well as well. But um, you know, I'm just focusing game in, game out, and uh, it's been working so far. So I just want to keep it that way. The Habs will try and get back into the win column in Ottawa, and they will have to do so without the services of Andre Markov, who continues to rehab a knee injury. Andre Carbet, CTV Sports. Vancouver Canucks forward Rick Rippon has been suspended six games for an altercation with a fan. Rippon grabbed a fan as he exited the ice during a 6-2 road loss Tuesday at the Minnesota Wild. He was given the punishment today after meeting with Gary Bettman and Colin Campbell in New York. His team, the Canucks, support the suspension but says NHL arenas need better barriers between players in the stands. Rippon was on his way to the dressing room when he briefly grabbed the fan who was applauding at the railing after Rippon's second fight with Brad Staubitz of the Wild. Well, maybe a preview of the East Division Finals. The first place Montreal Alouettes are at the second place Hamilton Tiger Cats tonight. The Alouettes are resting some key players who are nursing minor injuries, including Avon Coburn and Diamond Ferry. But the team still wants to win tonight. We're here to compete and win. And we are coming off a short week. So, you know, whenever it's a short week, we are limited in what we could do. But we're not going to hold any team back. So once the playoffs come around, whoever we're playing, we're going to have a bunch of new plays. You know, uh, whether we uh, do them now or later, it's not going to matter because we're going to have a lot of plays that are going to help us win games. Well, it is Friday. That means my favorite day of the week and the best feature in sports television, the Plays of the Week. Plays of the Week is brought to you by Monster Gym. Boost up your energy level. That is a look at sports. Thanks, Paul. Talk back results and another look at the weather forecast when we come back. An upper level low is bringing a few flurries to the townships, Quebec City, the Laurentians, Montreal expected to stay dry for tonight. Weak high pressure will build in for Saturday and that'll mean a mix of sun and cloud. But we're keeping an eye on a system coming out of the four corner states, which will set up shop on Sunday and it looks like it'll stick around for a few days. So we will see some unsettled weather through early next week. Milder temperatures, though, the high topping out at 15 degrees on Tuesday. A few breaks of sunshine, but remaining unsettled right through until Friday. We're still sitting at three Celsius. 37 Fahrenheit. Howard S. Billings High School in Chattagay honored more than a hundred of its brightest students last night. They picked up awards for academic excellence. 
Two students, though, stood out for their contributions to school and community. 14-year-old Shauna Crawford McCabe was honored for her work with the Chattagay Legion. And 15-year-old Hannah Shuchuk for her help in starting a soup kitchen. They received the In My Backyard Award. MP Justin Trudeau himself, a former high school teacher, handed out the prizes. Uh, kids these days are more involved than ever before. They're more aware of what's going on in the world. We just need to encourage them to actually get into action. The In My Backyard Awards are the brainchild of Lori Morrison and her husband, Greg Jihu, an English teacher at Howard S. Billings. They also donated the money for the prizes. Meantime, young people were also being honored in Dorval. It was the 11th edition of the Young Achievers Gala. The gala recognizes students who get involved in the community and help to make the West Island a better place to live. Our own Lori Graham and Stefan Giroux hosted the event. Scholarships totaling $25,000 were handed out to 40 deserving young people. And the Foundation of Stars Ball was held at the Windsor Ballroom on Peel Street last night. The annual black tie affair raises money for children's hospitals, focusing on research and helping to better the lives of sick children and their families. CTV's Mose Persico co-hosted last night's event, which raised over a million dollars. Since it started in 1977, the foundation of Stars Ball has raised more than $62 million. They will be making free throws and jump shots tonight at the Bell Centre. The Toronto Raptors and the New York Knicks are playing a preseason game here in Montreal. It's a sellout. On Talkback today, 27% said yes, they think Montreal could support an NBA team. But 73% said no, we couldn't. Our thanks to everyone who took time to vote in today's Talkback poll. This evening lineup is brought to you by the all-new Buick LaCrosse, a new class of world class. the story so far there is a cholera outbreak in Haiti it's the biggest medical crisis since the January earthquake more than 140 people have died thousands more are sick hospitals are overcrowded some are forcing patients to turn away Montreal Quebec and the Bombardier Alstom consortium have officially signed the multi-billion dollar contract for the new metro cars the deal is controversial Quebec passed a special law to give the contract to Bombardier without going to tenders and work will continue on the Mercier Bridge this weekend from 11 o'clock tonight until 5 a.m. Monday morning. Only one lane will be open in both directions. The same thing applies next weekend. YouTube has reached new artistic heights. On the outside walls of the Guggenheim Museums in New York, Bilbao, Berlin and Venice. The white walls of the Guggenheim Museum in New York City were transformed into a giant screen last night. On display were winners of YouTube's creative video contest, 25 entries chosen out of more than 23,000. They are on display until Sunday, and if you can't get to New York City before Sunday, look for the Guggenheim story with a link to the winning videos on our website at ctvmontreal.ca. And by the way, you can catch any other news story or special report that you might have missed on our air also online, ctvmontreal.ca. Wow, that was really quite a quite Very a neat. YouTube as art. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. cool overnight. Temperatures dropping close to the freezing mark here in Montreal. Outside the city will be below freezing, so down to about minus six if you're heading up to the cottage tonight in the Laurentians. Here's a look at our satellite picture. We've got a few flurries to boot outside the city. Here in town, we're expecting dry conditions today and again tomorrow. A mix of sun and cloud. Wet weather moves in for Sunday. Daytime highs of nine degrees for both Saturday and Sunday. Well, in sports, good night maybe to stay in since it's so cold. Alouettes and Tiger Cats in Hamilton and, of course, the Knicks and Raptors. And to watch that one, uh, I will have highlights for you at 11.45. Could it's be here. Yeah, that's right. To the Bell Center. Mm, interesting. Have a good weekend. Bye for now. Good night. <laughs>
Ivanko and see.